thing, guys, is really our component form is not going to be that helpful for us, right? Like, let's go ahead and just draw the vector right now. So we have a vector of a boat that's traveling due north. So I have a bearing that I know I'm going to create a bearing. Actually, no, I'm going to do this a little bit lower. No, actually, that's fine. Actually, let's do it a little bit over. Sorry. So here's my boat due north. Now, the magnitude is just I have a rate, 27 miles per hour. So that's going to have to be my magnitude because we don't have anything like we don't have a distance like we did before, right? So my rate is going to be my magnitude, 27 miles per hour. So I'm going to call that B for boat. So that's going to be the name of my vector, B, right? For boat, because it's a boat. Um, now, in addition to that, we also have a current that is flowing at a bearing of south 60 degrees west. So we have south 60 degrees west. So that's going to look something like this. And that's significantly smaller um, because that only has is going 8 miles per hour. So let's do this a little bit smaller. And let's do 8 miles per hour. Now, what should we label that? Maybe C? Sure, sounds good, C. For current. So those are my two vectors. And again, what the question is asking us, so I told you to draw the, I showed you to draw the two vectors, and hopefully you guys got something there. We know that that's 60 degrees right there, and that's 8 miles per hour. Right? And good. That's, hopefully we should have got to this point. Um, now, what is the actual speed and direction of the boat? So to actually understand the speed and direction of the boat, we got to create, like, we got to understand what these vectors are. Like, how can I write this in terms of, like, vectors? That's what we want to look into. So the problem is, um, like, using component form, like, we don't know the x and y coordinates of, like, our terminal points. We could say the terminal point for there we could probably figure out, right, 0, 27. But for this one, we don't really know. Now, could we figure it out? Could we use trig to figure out the x and y coordinates? Yes, we could. But that's more math, which you're doing, which I'm telling you, that's more math to do. So what we could do is, couldn't we just write each vector in terms of its magnitude and direction? Meaning, the boat. The magnitude is 27. The angle is what? What is the angle? In 90 degrees. So we're going to say cosine of 90 degrees, sine of 90 degrees. Done. That is the vector of the boat in terms of its magnitude and direction. A little bit easier than trying to do the math to figure out the component form. Yeah, we're doing it in standard form. Because your calculator doesn't understand bearings. right? Your calculator doesn't know if it's bearings of 90 degrees or regular 90 degrees. So that's why we use standard. Um, so for the current, we, we're going to say that's going to have a magnitude of 8. And the angle in this one, now again, we've got to do the angle in standard form. Your vector, your calculator does not understand a bearing of 60 degrees. So if we know from here to here is 270, but we're going back 60 degrees, 210 degrees. So cosine of 210, sine of 210. So now we have created the two vectors in terms of their magnitude and their direction. Yes? Yeah. OK, so if we need to find the actual speed and, ang and direction of our boat, what is it we're actually looking for? We're looking for the result. We're looking for what, what is happening when the boat is being impacted by the current, right? Yes? So basically what we're looking for is the sum of these two vectors. So instead of drawing your vector separately, what if we drew vector C up here? Head to tail method. And what you would see is the resultant vector, which would be C plus B. That's what we want to figure out. That's what we want to figure out the speed for. That's what we want to figure out the angle for, that vector. And doesn't that kind of make sense? If you're driving, you know, you're taking the boat 27 miles per hour, but you have this current going here, that you're going to end up somewhere there unless you correct it. Right? Unless you correct it with the steering, right, or with your speed or with your throttle, you're going to be going in that direction. So we're going to assume that there's no corrections made. So let's figure out what this magnitude is. So then how do we find the magnitude of B plus C? Well, we could type this all into our calculator one by one. I am going to, um, actually, I'm going to write out, I'm just going to write it all out so we can do it on our calculator. 
So let's do b plus c. Now again, how do we add two vectors? How do we add two vectors? Just add their components, right? Add the first two components, add the second two components. So it might be easier, well, it will be easier, to distribute your um, scalar. So therefore, the sum here is going to be 27 cosine of 90 degrees plus 8 cosine of 210 degrees, comma, 27 sine of 90 degrees plus 8 sine of 210 degrees. So I know I wrote a lot, but you could do this one by one in your calculator if you wanted to. Um, I just, you know, but the only problem with doing it one by one in your calculator is you have to store all those values, and I just prefer not to do that. So let's go ahead and type this all into our calculator. So 27 times the cosine of 90 degrees, which you should know is 0 anyways, right? And then plus 8 cosine of 210. Now I'm going to get negative 6.92. And I am going to tell you I am going to store that value because I didn't really, I didn't really tell you guys how I am going to um, round this answer. So I'm going to store that as a, alpha a. So I rounded the answer in there to the nearest hundredth, but I'm going to store it in my calculator because I'm going to use that value. And then let's do these two. So 27 sine of 90 degrees, which is 27, right? Right, isn't 90 degrees 1? Sine of 90 is 1. So 1 times 27 is 27. And then plus 8 sine of 210, which is 23. Cool, so I don't need to round that at all. Now, that's b plus c. That's my resultant vector. And it doesn't, does it kind of make sense for this to be at negative 6.9 to be negative, and then the, the y um, component is smaller than that component? Yeah. Right? Makes sense. Um, so let's go and find the magnitude then. So to find the magnitude, I'm going to use my stored answer a. I'm not going to use the rounded answer. And I'll do 23 squared. So I'll tell you the square root of my stored answer a squared plus 23 squared. And round that to 24, um, I'll round that to the nearest hole, 24 miles per hour. Then the last one is again finding the direction. And what do we already notice? This is in the second quadrant. So we're, gonna get only, we're not going to get the true angle, are we? We're going to get the angle in the fourth quadrant, right? So we got to just be aware of that. So the direction, though, is let's go ahead and do this. So the direction is going to be tangent of theta equals 23 over negative 6.93. So therefore, I do theta equals tangent inverse. Can you put it over A, though? Oh, what am I doing? Yeah, A. Sorry, I should write A, not that. We don't want to use the rounded answer. So do tangent inverse of 23 divided by alpha A. And I get a negative 73 degrees. So we know that's going to be down here, but we know this angle is 73 degrees. Now, if I wanted to do this in a bearing, that rounds to the nearest hole, 73 degrees. If I want to give this to a bearing, how could I represent this as a bearing? Because that's basically the direction. So from here to here is 73 degrees. So what would be the bearing? Well, what's there? What's from here to here? How far is that? 73. How about 17? Right? North 17 degrees north 17 degrees west because 17 degrees and 73 are complementary angles right they add up to 90 so that would be your angle and that would be your magnitude and again let's just make sure this makes sense does it make sense that the magnitude is going to be lower than what it was before the current yes yeah it makes sense doesn't it make sense that my vector is being shifted over here to the left Okay, so when you guys have a problem like this, which you will, <coughs> will have, <coughs> um, what you're going to want to do 